along those lines, um, Liz, what would you say in, in your team and, and the team you've pulled together in your university? Um, uh, wh what do you do to assure good nutrition and minimize aspiration? So our nutritionist is probably a critical part of our team um, and regularly follows all of our SMA patients. And I think it's really important to have an appropriate weight and make sure we're meeting our, all of our appropriate nutritional needs. And so I think nutrition is kind of one important piece of that, although there's other gastrointestinal component parts that we can also talk about separately. Um, in terms of nutrition, um, we do know that particularly in the weaker patients, they don't respond well to kind of fasting. So they frequently do better with smaller snacks throughout the day. And I think you see this in some of the type twos that are kind of going to school and like they really need a little bit of that boost. And so we really work on kind of giving them a little bit more of a protein boost that's more longstanding than some of the sugar boosts that most kids would kind of go to uh, right away. Um, really making sure that we have a appropriate weight um, and so that means both avoid being underweight, which is our primary danger in some of our weaker infants where they may develop feeding difficulties. Um, but in our older patients, a lot of times that also means avoiding being overweight because for any patient who's weak, carrying around a lot of extra weight can make a lot of those things more challenging as well. So really, and it's harder to lose calories when you're weak and exercising is kind of more difficult. Um, so really trying to kind of maximize all of that together. Um, I think there's a couple important nutritional components that have to be addressed, in particular vitamin D and calcium. Um, given the fact that bone health is a really important thing to think about, particularly in these patients who aren't standing and ambulating. Um, so making sure that we are kind of providing at least that basic um, needs uh, with a vitamin D and calcium, I think is also a critical piece of that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a lot of other gastrointestinal complaints that, ca that I think as neurologists, we often are kind of primarily following um, along with the pediatrician often. And sometimes they escalate to the point where we really need our GI colleagues as well. Uh, constipation and reflux are very common. Um, a lot of them also just we see this in a lot of our patients that are weak where their guts are slow moving throughout from kind of top to bottom um, and helping to make sure that they're tolerating their feeds uh, is a very important kind of factor going on. And I think it's frequently helpful to really be proactive when we do get to those cases where we need a G tube or an NG tube supplementation. I think it's always important to kind of say that this doesn't mean that the children need to stop eating. Uh, but really to let them kind of enjoy their eating, again, not to tire out with this kind of very basic life function. Um, they can continue to work on the skill, continue to work on it, but we need to make sure that they have maximal nutrition. Because for those kids who fall off the weight curve, in my experience at least, I see their motor scores also fall, um, and they really don't do as well overall when their nutrition isn't maximized. And I think you made a very good point about um, um, it doesn't... Uh, the children can actually be quite obese um, before they actually go above the um, 90th or 95th percentile for weight just because the natural state of some of the children with um, symptomatic SMA is that they have a decreased muscle bulk and that puts them in the leaner kind of categories. Now again, we're hoping that this might change over time with, with treatment and that we can forget some of these rules of thumb. But, but you're very right about that. But that's an important point to underscore because many pediatricians will want to fatten them up so that they're proportionate to their height mm -hmm. and that just creates fat and what's missing is muscle. So typically you want to keep them on the leaner side, five to 10 percentile, even if they are mm -hmm. much taller or longer. And I sometimes really find it helpful just to go back and look at the patient sometimes. As much as we look at the growth charts and can follow the trends, you always have to go back and look at what the patient looks like in front of you. Um, particularly with a lot of our older patients who may have severe scoliosis and contractures and height is no longer an accurate measurement um, to really just look at the child in front of you. Yeah. I think for some of the um, clinical trials people have had to, um, or have chosen to go to looking at um, synthesized or calculated heights from ulnar lengths, and that's probably a little bit more accurate than, than actual. I would have thought that, yeah, but I, I started so. using it, and uh -huh. it seems like it overestimates height. 
mm -hmm. at least the familial height for by mm -hmm. four or five inches, mm -hmm. I would have thought. Uh, so I think there may be some excessive growth of the arms or something because uh. in SMA, uh -huh. it was striking uh -huh. that the parents would say, there's no way he's going to be six foot three. Uh -huh.